Qatar's got a major labor abuse problem for the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Abuses including the confiscation of employees' passports. Top concerns include late payments of salaries, cramped housing and threats to workers who complain about conditions. FIFA, the largest soccer organization in the world, is responsible for organizing the World Cup as well as other international soccer championships. The World Cup is played again every four years and each time it is held in a different nation. In 2018, it was hosted in Russia, while this year it will take place in Qatar. This outcome is one of the most highly controversial choices in soccer history, which is why the news went viral. A questionable choice given that Qatar has never qualified for an international competition and that the tournament had to be shifted to the winter because of the country's extremely hot summers. It has since come to light that FIFA selected Qatar for completely different reasons and they are now being accused of some truly shocking activities like corruption and the violation of human rights. So what is the truth and how can FIFA get away with it if it really is that bad? Is it even socially correct to broadcast this World Cup on national TV or does that make us all approve of this form of modern slavery? This video is a journey into the dark world behind the 2022 World Cup. A look behind the curtain into one of the most controversial organisations ever. But to fully understand the story, we must first go back to the moment where it all began. On December the 2nd, 2010, FIFA granted the hosting rights for the 2018 World Cup to Russia and that of 2022 to Qatar. The winner to organize the 2022 FIFA World Cup is Qatar. Qatar, a country with no significant sports history, won the election over Australia, Japan, South Korea and the United States. At the time, FIFA stated that they chose Qatar for the following reason. The first ever World Cup in the Middle East will raise the level of soccer in the region and help Qatar tap into its relatively untapped talent pool and market potential. Unfortunately, nothing is as it seems. Only after the organising rights are given away to Qatar, fans and soccer players are being told that the country is far too hot in summer to hold a sporting event. Very, very hot. I'm talking temperatures of 50 degrees Celsius. Unbearable, to be honest, unbearable. FIFA decides to turn the entire soccer calendar upside down to hold the tournament in November and December for the first time in history. Obviously, this did not make sense for anyone. So what real reason was behind this choice? Why would FIFA do this? And did they play a dirty game with Qatar for other purposes? Well, let me introduce you to the following phenomenon, sports washing. Sports washing happens when the organisation of a significant sporting event seeks to improve the reputation of a country and hides issues such as lack of respect for human rights. Over the years, it has also been considered to be a form of propaganda and there are plenty of examples of it. Take Russia, Saudi Arabia and Germany. These nations, among others, hosted the Olympics, the Formula One World Championship and cycling competitions. When broadcasted, the whole world then sees the amazing atmosphere in a country accompanied by fireworks, gorgeous photographs and well-organised sporting events. But these tournaments just serve as a smokescreen to hide anti-democratic practices and violations of human rights from the rest of the world, all in the hope that the rest of the world will recognise them as a good country despite their shortcomings. Of course, it's crystal clear now Qatar is eager to host the World Cup in order to improve its image as a strict Middle Eastern country with ultra-conservative morals by displaying a supposedly modern look during the tournament. But why is FIFA participating in this? Well, that's where the money comes into play, of course. Long before the World Cup vote, there were already forged plans to bring the trophy to Qatar. Ultimately, FBI investigations revealed that several FIFA members were bribed for millions of dollars to vote for Qatar. The numerous pieces of evidence confirm this and it was actually quite obvious anyway. 
A witness testified in court that a senior FIFA official accepted at least $1 million in bribes in exchange for voting for Qatar to host the 2022 World Cup. Also, Alejandro Bizzacco, an Argentine sports marketing executive, claimed that Julio Gradona, a senior vice president at FIFA, told him he was owed money in exchange for his vote. Since then, several FIFA members have registered that the decision to award the tournament to Qatar was a so-called mistake, including Theo Svanziger and former president Sepp Blatter. But of the 22 FIFA members who were allowed to vote, exactly half were later fined, legally prosecuted or suspended for life because of corruption. The best known wrongdoer is Sepp Blatter. The FIFA president was suspended for eight years in 2015 for his involvement in the scandal. But really, the money issue is not even the worst of all. Do you happen to know FIFA's slogan? For the game, for the world. This should stand for FIFA to respect human rights across the globe. It sounds almost too ironic to be true, but it is the truth. So if they really stood for that, how is it acceptable that Qatar violates human rights and already 6,500 migrant workers were killed in the construction of the World Cup? Shouldn't this whole World Cup not be boycotted at all? And how bad is it? The treatment of the workers recruited to build the infrastructure is one of the most debated issues of the Qatar World Cup. The migrant workers are mostly from poor Asian or African countries, such as India, Bangladesh or Nepal. Yet they came to Qatar looking for work, hoping for better wages and new opportunities. But this came with even a bigger cost, their life. Something they could not have foreseen, arriving in Qatar they have to turn in their passports and are treated like slaves. Then when we land here the first day, they are in the airport. They take all the passport. Yeah. The legal system behind this is also known as the kafala system. This is a system which is applied with regard to foreign workers in several Arab states around the Persian Gulf. Basically, every migrant worker must have a local sponsor. Typically, this is the local employer who is responsible for a visa, wages, working conditions, living conditions, and entering or leaving Qatar. A migrant pays a sponsor, usually about 500 to 4,300 US dollars to arrange a job on their behalf. In return, the sponsor promises things like higher wages, good housing, and excellent working conditions. But this turns out to be anything but true. Once the migrant arrived at his new workplace to sign the contract, he quickly realized that all of those promises were just lies. The International Trade Union Confederation and Human Rights Watch claim that the kafala system exposes migrant workers to routine mistreatment. It turns out that a four bedroom often housed more than eight people and the smell of ammonia hung throughout the whole complex. A report from May 2018 found that a group of 1,200 workers were living without running water and electricity. And in many cases, the workers were not even paid in full. Sometimes payments were delayed for several months or didn't even come at all, which meant workers couldn't buy food or make payments on sponsor-related loans or worse, couldn't provide for their families back home. But it becomes even worse. As Qatar's climate is characterized by summers with intense heat that can reach 50 degrees Celsius, migrants are forced to work in these burning temperatures without days off. Even if a sick worker takes a day off, their wages are cut not for one day, but for three to four or even more. As a result, numerous migrants have died from cardiac arrest or from heat exhaustion for the construction of this World Cup. The initial estimate was at more than 4,000 worker deaths, but The Guardian recently reported more than 6,500 deaths by 2021, and they're not even finished yet. Amnesty International accused Qatar in March 2016 of using forced labor, forcing workers to live in poor conditions and withholding their wages and passports. It also sued FIFA for failing to prevent human rights violations in the constructions of the stadium. 
After complaining that they were not paid for months, migrant workers told Amnesty of verbal harassment and threats they had received. However, in 2020 Qatar introduced two new laws, which was a significant step towards protecting migrant labour. Previously, workers had to get permission from their employer to change jobs. This was now suspended, following a mandatory minimum monthly wage. These two reforms would largely put an end to the exploitation system, but Qatar must firmly implement and enforce these laws, or there will again be no change. Something that remains sickening is that FIFA has used Qatar's reform efforts to portray the organisation as heroes. For example, they claim that because of the World Cup, the country reformed its practices. But what about the nine years that these migrants were then completely exploited and the 6,500 deaths? Will they get their lives back? The answer is clearly no. The time is almost here. The World Cup will be broadcast all over the world and millions of people will be watching it. But whether you are talking about the violation of human rights or the corruption within FIFA, this World Cup is an insult to everybody who loves soccer. Do you think FIFA is a sincere organisation and really stands for their principles? Is it reasonable to completely change soccer players' schedules and lie to migrant workers, all to make Qatar more attractive and to fill the FIFA committee's own pockets? Is this World Cup still really about soccer? Let us know in the comments what you think about this. If you're looking forward to more videos like this one, this is definitely the channel you should subscribe to. Also, do not forget to put your notifications on. See you in the next video.